JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for April the 14th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the dollar traded lower against all but two of the other G10 currencies on Monday and during the Asian morning Tuesday. The main gainers were the Aussie, the Kiwi and the British Pound in that order, while the only losers were, uh, the only losers were Nog and Sec. Then Greenback lost the least ground against the Euro, the Swiss Franc and the Japanese uh, Yen. Now, the strengthening of the risk-linked uh, Aussie and Kiwi, as well as the relative weakness of the dollar, the yen and the francs, suggest that the risk appetite was once again supported. Shifting attention to the equity world, though, we see that uh, both the Dow Jones and the S&P 500 closed in negative waters. This may have been on expectations of a very bad earnings season starting today. JP Morgan and Wells Fargo uh, we'll start the season with their earnings uh, today. Only Nasdaq gained somewhat, aided by a 6.2% gain in, um, in Amazon. EU markets were closed in celebration of uh, Easter Monday, we need to know that. Uh, but during the Asian session today, investors' morale was more upbeat, with Japan's Nikkei and China's Shanghai Composite gaining 3.08 and 1.31% uh, respectively. Now, the rebound in, uh, in market participants' appetite uh, during the Asian trading may have been, um, may have been driven by more signs that the coronavirus spreading may be leveling off, as well as by China's better than expected trade data. With regards to the virus, infected cases continue to slow, as you can see on, uh, on the graph here. The gray line is uh, the daily change in infected cases, and the blue line is the daily change in uh, deaths. We see further slowdown in cases. Uh, while the number of deaths was uh, more or less equal to Sundays, you can see the flat uh, blue line uh, here. As far as the Chinese data are concerned, both exports and imports and imports fell uh, by much less than expected. You can see on the graph here that uh, the readings were still are still below zero, but they were much less than the forecasts, uh, and uh, also. Uh, the exports and imports uh, fell at a slower pace than February. This has turned the nation's uh, 7.09 billion US dollars deficit into uh, a, 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 an 18.55 billion dollars surplus. Now, as for our view, as long as the virus numbers continue to point to a slowdown, equities and the risk-linked assets may continue to gain on expectations that the restrictive measures around the globe may be lifted soon. Among currency pairs, the one that could perform better may be OZN. Apart from being supported due to the relatively upbeat investor morale, the OZ may continue benefiting from the RBA's stance with regards to monetary policy. Remember that this bank appears unwilling to cut interest rates uh, further, while last week it noted that if conditions continue to improve, it may start scaling back its uh, quantitative easing soon. As for the yen, it is well known that during periods of market optimism, it comes under selling interest. Having said all that, though, we are still reluctant to trust a long-lasting recovery in the broader market sentiment. We prefer to take things day by day. Just a day of new records in infected cases and deaths may be enough to revive fears and spark another round of risk aversion. On top of that, we believe that even if we have reached the peak of the outbreak, removing the restrictive measures and reopening economies around the globe 
may be a very slow procedure as uh, governments may want to make sure that the virus has indeed be contained. Now, as uh, for the rest of today's events, the only releases worth mentioning uh, on uh, today's calendar are the US NFIB Small uh, Business Optimism Index for March and the American Petroleum Institute Weekly Report on Crude Oil Inventories. There is no forecast for those releases, but due to the pandemic uh, fast spreading in, uh, in the US uh, during March, we see the risks surrounding the NFIB index as tilted to the downside. Just for the record, uh, February sprint was at 104.5. So that's it from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week uh, much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm hosting every Monday at uh, 7 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again uh, tomorrow. JFT just fair and direct.